This tutorial is for the Cougar Cubs Adjustment Layers tutorial, showing how to use that with an image that is provided for you in the Photoshop Tutorials folder. So, we're going to get started. Um, we have Photoshop open, and we're going to File, Open, to be able to find the correct photo. We're here in the Comp210 Photoshop Tutorial Files folder, um, which you can download from the class website. I'm going to select the Cougar Cubs photo and say open. So here's the photo we're going to use. Um, and we're going to be using adjustment layers to make some changes to the colors of this photo. So this is a photo from Flickr. Um, and it's licensed under a Creative Commons license, so we can modify it. We can't use it for commercial use, um, but this tutorial should be fine. So um, the first thing we're going to do is change the size by going to Image, Image Size. And we're going to change it here to 1200 pixels across. This is going to make the image slightly smaller. We just don't need it that big for the purposes of our blog, and so that will save it as a smaller file size, and it will still be pretty large as you can see. We're now on step four if you're following along in the written instructions. So there are multiple ways to zoom in and out. Right now this photo is kind of small. You can use the magnifying glass to zoom. You can also change the percentage way down here in the lower left corner to zoom. But one of the best ways is to go to View and Fit on Screen, and your photo will pop exactly to fill your screen so you can see it perfectly. Um, this works in a lot of the other Adobe programs as well. And you can also use the keyboard shortcut, which is um, Control-0 for Windows or Command-0 plus zero for Macs. So beneath the Layers panel on the bottom right, so here's our Layers panel down here, um, there are these little options down at the bottom. Right now all we see is our background image, which is fine. Um, to add an adjustment layer, we're going to click on the icon that uh, I think looks like a black and white cookie, which if you've ever had one, are delicious. Um, but it's basically the circle icon that's filled in um, halfway. And if you click on that, you'll get a menu of different types of adjustment layers that you can get. And um, adjustment layers are great because they're non-destructive. They don't change the underlying photo, so you can add them, take them away, adjust them, and it doesn't ruin the photo underneath. Um, another step we're going to want to make sure we do, um, even before this, is save this image as a Photoshop file. So go up and do Save As, and you can save this um, anywhere you'd like, but make sure you save it as a Photoshop. PSD file so that it will save all the effects. So now we're going to go back to that adjustment layers icon and we're going to choose color balance for our first adjustment layer. So as soon as we click that it creates this layer above our image. It also pulls up this properties panel um, which is the properties for this adjustment layer. And we're going to go ahead, you can see that if you change these a lot you can really change the color hue of an image. Um, this is a good way to adjust photos um, a lot of the time, but you don't want to make too dramatic adjustments usually. We're going to go ahead and leave this yellow slider somewhere between negative 20 and negative 30 over in the numbers. And to close this panel, if you want to view your picture, you can click these little double arrows. And if you didn't end up liking the way it was, you can always click the um, icon next to the adjustment layer to bring back that panel and change it. Now we're going to add an adjustment layers, um, an adjustment layer with the icon for levels. And this brings up a histogram that shows the distribution of light and dark pixels in this picture. There are different ways to do this, but for the purposes of this photo, we're just going to bring up the contrast a little bit by dragging in the, the dark side and dragging in the light side so that there's a little bit of contrast. And what you want to look for is having some really nice contrast in the Cougar Cubs' faces here. We're not going to worry too much about the background or anything else right now. Once you think their faces look good, um, you can go ahead and close that adjustment layer and you can see that it is now there as levels. So the one thing about this is that we adjusted it for their faces. We don't necessarily need that adjustment on the background. So here's how we can make um, that layer, that adjustment layer, only affect the parts of the image that we want it to affect. First of all, we're going to go down here to our uh, colors that we have in the very bottom 
left because we want to have make sure that black is selected. Then we're going to fill the paint bucket and if you don't see it right away it's probably hiding under the gradient tool. Um, and to get this family of tools you just click and hold down to get all the options. So make sure you have the paint bucket tool and make sure that you have this levels um, layer selected and then click and you've filled in that whole square as black and what that has done to the effect is made it go away. So now that is masking the entire effect. We want to be able to get some of that back though for the, the cougar icon. So we're going to switch those two colors down here by clicking that double arrow so that white is back in front. We're going to click our paintbrush and choose something like uh, this 80, about 80 pixels um, not too hard or too soft, kind of a, a little bit of blurry edges. And what we're going to do is just color in the cougar cups. And what you can see is happening is that the effect is now being applied for that layer, the one we just did with the levels that really brought out the contrast. It's being sort of painted back in just affecting the cougar cubs and we don't have to have it affect the background. You can tell if you've done a thorough job because you'll actually get a little thumbnail over in the layers panel. It looks like I've missed a whole spot on that cub's back. You want to make sure you get everything. And uh, you can kind of see what that shape is down in the thumbnail to make sure you're on the right track. Now we're moving on to step eight. If you're following along in the written instructions, we're going to use make another adjustment layer, and this one's going to be for hue saturation. So you'll notice that uh, hue changes the color entirely if you want to try that out. And if you try it out and you need to make it go back, you can always type zero there. Um, we're going to go ahead and change the saturation. If you change the saturation uh, while this is set to master here, that can actually make the image grayscale, or you can really get some uh, pretty outrageous colors. Um, we're going to keep that one at zero, and we're going to do from this drop down greens. And we're going to bring the saturation of the greens um, down pretty far, and we're also going to bring up the lightness a little bit. And now we're going to do exactly the same thing for the yellows. So we're going to bring the saturation down and bring the lightness up. And what that has done is sort of taken those colors out of the background. Um, and you can always see what that adjustment layer is doing by clicking the eyeball icon down here in the layers panel. Um, if we turn off that adjustment layer, you can see this is how it looked before. And then when we turned it, when we turn it back on, it takes away that green that was in the background layer. Now we're moving on to step nine. We're going to choose another adjustment layer for brightness and contrast. And you'll see that the properties panel changes depending on what we're doing. We're just going to bring the brightness slider a little over to the right just to brighten things up. Uh, do it somewhere between 20 and 30. And you'll notice that it, that looks a little bit washed out. We don't want this to apply to the cubs. They look a little over dramatic now. Um, instead, we want it just to apply to the background so that it looks pretty pretty light. Um, and so we're going to do another uh, mask using the black and white um, color. So this time we want to have it apply to most of the image but not to the cups. So we're going to use um, have black in the foreground. We're going to use our paintbrush tool. And now we're going to paint over those cubs again. But you'll notice that in the thumbnail this looks sort of like the inverse of the one we did before because before we wanted the effect to apply only to the cubs. In this one we would want it to apply to everything but the cubs. So the rule of thumb is that anything in those little uh, thumbnails showing you the effects, any area of it that is white is showing the effect being applied, which is why it defaults to that when you first apply it, and anything that's painted in black is the image not being, or the effect not being applied. We can again look at our little our little picture to make sure we've gotten everything. That looks pretty good. 
So now we're going to finish this image by adding a vignette effect that darkens the corners of the image so that the faces at the center stand out. Um, we've created some contrast between the, the foreground, the cubs, and then the background, but now we want to kind of soften it and make it a little, um, make it a little bit more like a portrait. So we're going to use this um, elliptical marquee tool to do that. It usually defaults to the rectangular marquee tool, so if you hold down, you can get the whole family of tools and select the elliptical marquee tool. And starting right in the top corner, um, hold and drag right down to the bottom corner so that you get an oval that exactly fills the whole image. So now we're going to do a few effects to this particular selection um, before we do our vignette. So um, with this selected, go to Select, Modify, and Expand. And we're going to set this to 20 pixels. And say OK. And that expands it a little bit. Now we're going to go to Select, Modify, and Feather. And we'll set this one to 70. And what that does is kind of blur the edges a little bit so that when we fill it in, instead of having a hard line, it will have kind of a, a blurred line instead. Right now, we still have the center of the image selected here. Um, we're going to go to Select and Inverse so that instead, you can see how that kind of shifted. The corners are selected instead. We still have our black fill selected down here, which is great. We're going to go back to our Paint Bucket tool. And at this point, we need to have a new layer. So um, I think in the written instructions, it says to start this at the beginning of the step, which would be smart, but you can also do it now. So we're going to add a new layer using the little um, square icon at the bottom of the layers panel. And we're going to go ahead and name this um, vignette effect, just so we know what it is. And with that selected, we can now um, click in one of the selected corners here. And you'll see that it has kind of a blurred bit around the edges. And we're also going to down, go down here in the Layers panel with the Vignette layer selected. We're going to change the opacity to 60 so it's not quite so dramatic. Now you can hit Enter, um, or you can hit uh, Select, Deselect, which is also Control or Command D um, to deselect that selection. And now you can click through each of your different layers to kind of see how um, they added to the overall picture here. So if we start at the very beginning, this is the picture we started with. Then we added the color balance. We added some levels to bring out the contrast. We took away those background colors using hue or saturation. We changed the brightness contrast to lighten the background. And then we added our vignette effect. So that's the final image. You want to make sure you go ahead and save this, um, and later we'll be exporting it so you can post it on your blog.